Folks, welcome back. My name is Rudy. You're watching Alpha Investments. Today, I think this is our only Ixalan video. So, I got a patron over here, Daniel F., all the way in good old New York, New York, the old NY squared. And um, I think this is our only Ixalan video. And what's interesting about this is the market for this product is very, very surprising. Like, you would think, with the game piece era... And everything going on, you would think there'd be some issues, and yet I am blown away by the strength of a standard magic re standard magic release. It's unbelievable. So, by the way, we're gonna pause the video right there. Remember, folks, we got the new 2023 Alpha Investment shirts, and the shirt says, "Remember, folks, the shirt says this shirt." is worth more than your game pieces. <laughs> uh, link below on eBay. Uh, we do about one to 2,000 shirts a year at the end of every year. Uh, so the filming of this, about 1,000 shirts are sold. So some sides are sold out already. I apologize. And we are starting the video off with a little map. Um, keep in mind, if you're interested in buying an Alpha Investment shirt so you can wear it and everybody uh, attacks you and thinks you're evil. You know, I don't know what, because remember Rudy's like destroys the world or something. Uh, yeah, appreciate it. Other than that, Sit back, relax, Daniel. Oh my god, I can't, even open, I can't even open the packs. Well, this is going to be a tough video. The amount of glue that I used to... Oh, I got no strength left. I got nothing left. Wizards has destroyed the strength of Rudy. Um, there's just so many things I want to go over regarding this product. I just can't believe what's going on with it. Uh, nobody's really paying attention. Everybody's just angry at everything. And Jade Light. Let's see what we got going on. Storian. Starving. Copy in a gorgeous little citadel there. Not a great pack to start the video. So obviously Cavern of Souls is down to around the 30s, which is kind of I thought it'd go down to the 20s, but it's holding better than I thought Cavern would for being a standard card. And the amount of cards that are actually pretty desirable and sought after is ooh, there's a Sun's Avatar, a Savage Order, and a Thousand Moons. Nice little flippy there with that gorgeous. Yeah, they probably still should have brought back those lottery masterpiece cards with these. That would have been really cool. Uh, but we have multiple rares that are like we have a we have a ten fifteen dollar rare, we have a fifteen twenty dollar rare, and a lot of rares that are between the two and five dollar range. That's pretty unheard of for a standard set in modern times. Um, after kind of uh, doing a little bit of a, you know three seconds of research, it's quite wild to see. Oh, there's a Jurassic Park land. Um, it's quite wild in a pilgrimage to see stores. Are, there's actually multiple stores that have done mass box openings on Ixalan. Yeah, you heard me right. I didn't think it... I mean, as of the filming of this video, let me explain where we're at. Collector boxes are at $225 plus tax. These boxes are $240 shipped on TCG Player, a box right now, with shipping and tax. And I, I, I you know, I just can't believe it. And beautiful, daring traveler. So as of right now, we're not having a good box one here, Daniel. We're hitting a bunch of little cards, but we're not hitting any of the really big, expensive ones. Kind of a weak start here. Kind of strange. Um, <clears throat> I just I'm blown. Away. Hey, there's our first cavern. So again, <laughs> thirty to forty dollar range cavern right there. Um, I just can't believe that beautiful Shahili. Love that. And of course, Polly Raptor there for the gorgeous, fancy schmancy mythic there. Um, the, the single, <laughs> the supply, like usually standard sets have been weaker for Magic lately, okay? Because there's usually a larger supply, a larger print run, in a longer time frame. And usually, as we go past release by 30, 60 days, standard Magic sets have been falling apart. And we do not seem to be experiencing that. Poet of Union, it's a strange art there, almost like a watercolor style art. And a perfect hybrid dino. And we got the Hatcher with some sort of weird print line down the whole card. Do you guys see that? At least it's not a crazy, like, I don't know. It'd be pretty upsetting if that was some sort of crazy, like, Cavern of Souls or something. So, you know, a lot of people still continue to ask what's going on. A lot of people are still trying to figure out why is Ixalan doing so well. And, you know, many times the most simplest answer is the correct one. And I think that is, this. we're in a situation where, you know, I don't think the supply is as high as before. For standard boxes, and is that another? That's another little print line. You see a little print line right there? There's a little roller line all the way down the card there on that dinosaur slot. 
I hope we don't actually hit a, like a Jurassic Park emblem. There's like a print line. That'd be from, that'd be a that'd be a Wizards customer service email. Uh, but yeah, that's it, you know we're getting ready to move into January here with the new Magic set, the old Ravi Ravi remastered, and it's like we're seeing all the strength in X1. And it's not letting up. Gotta admit, Jurassic Park's probably the best crossover they've done in Magic, and with X1 and dinosaurs, it's like I hope I hope they use that as a learning experience for future crossovers and things to do with magic on how to do it correctly. Does that make sense? Like, think about it. Like, if there's, like, if there's a time-traveling set, like, I feel like, you know, Back to the Future would be the, would be the universe's beyond crossover, right? Ooh, treasure map. Does that make sense? You know, if we have some sort of, I don't know, hero set, I guess that's where the Marvel's going to be coming in the future, right? Ooh, there's a nice hit. Ladies and gentlemen, these growing rights. Um, this is one of the more expensive rares in the set, especially in the flashy, fancy version. You know, there's. I hope that they use the Ixalan situation as a great m template of how to do universes beyond successfully. Because I feel like that alone is going to help a lot of things. And, it, you know, I, if, assuming they care, I always love artifacts like this, these mechanical kind of artifacts. I would say that's kind of neat there. All right, but we still really haven't had Reckless... Hey, the, the very infamous Jurassic Park piece of art right there with the old banner across the front. That's very cool. And a stalker there. So, um, doesn't it feel like the greatest box one, Daniel? As we wrap up box one already, six minutes into the video, does not feel like we've really hit it out of the park here. I did not not seen that other... Um, the two, Hey! Well, all right, all right. Well, never mind. I guess two Cavern of Souls in one box. Two thirty-five dollar caverns right there. That, that's a pretty. That's a pretty. I don't know. That seems pretty decent actually. I can't believe we got two caverns in a single box because most people told me uh, most boxes do not contain any caverns, and uh, two of them in the first box seem to be a pretty good sign. And Xavier, well, there's the roaming throne. I believe that's the fifteen dollar rare. So that's a really nice hit. And a get lost. Full Monty flashy get lost there. <coughs> That is the uh, that's the other really good hit. Okay, well maybe box one actually ended up uh, ended on a high note there. And there's a lot of I think a lot of people expected Ixalan to fall apart because of the history of the previous Ixalan and the fact there's no serialized cards. That was a really interesting thing because this is the first product that we've actually had without serialized cards that's been able to kind of hold up. And that's been an interesting, beautiful amulet. I know it's not really worth much, but beautiful amulet. And that's been kind of the thing everyone's been talking about. If there's no serialized cards, the magic set's going to collapse. And Ixalan seems to be the one that's, you know, well, actually, I don't know. Wildsville Drain is pretty stable, too. It seems to be kind of, you know, kind of bucking that trend and kind of going against that resistance, which is, there's that, there's that print line again. And Blood Letter, beautiful. I love that Mayan-style uh, artwork on there. That's very cool. And a Molten Collapse, same thing. That Mayan-style artwork is really beautiful. So, I believe... Um, it's incredibly bullish, and we're hoping, here yeah, I'm going to say it, we're hoping going into actual Ravnica that we can actually hold on to that. And that's what everyone is waiting for. Everyone, I love the skeleton style artwork, that's so cool. Um, I, I hope, I hope we can build on that momentum of stability. Again, you know, I don't think, you know, I get patron messages saying, well, Rudy, well, you know, Ixalan, you keep talking about how you're, how happy you are with the success of Ixalan. I said, Yeah. And then people, oh, another get lost. Very nice hit there. Uh, that's one of the better rares in the set. And I keep, and then I get another patron message or another follow up question saying something like, in a tunnel grinder, um, saying, well, Rudy, if, you, if you're so proud of the success of Ixalan, why aren't the boxes $300 a box? And I say, whoa, 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 whoa. Calm down, princess. I said, first of all, um, we don't need a collector box to come out and skyrocket to $300 to be considered successful. Um, if, a, if a collector box comes out and goes to $300 plus immediately, then the demand is either off the chart, or they actually did cut the print run substantially. That you don't need that particular. Oh, that's neat looking. You don't need <laughs> the command tower. You don't need that level of price swing to call a product successful. That's not necessary. You know, you don't want a collector box to come out at two hundred and then skyrocket to three to four hundred dollars. That's <laughs> like I agree with Wizards of the Coast on that. That's not the way it's supposed to happen. That's too extreme. That's too quick tendy. That's too Love the beautiful book. That's not really a sign of a healthy market on there. You want it to come out. Ooh, another get lost. Very nice hit there. And an Alpha Dino. Um, you want a product to come out, especially a collector box, 
at 210, 220, right? And you want it to go to maybe like 240, 250, 260 MSRP. And you want it to kind of just bounce around there plus minus 10% and do absolutely nothing till it goes out of print. And when I say out of print, I don't mean the collector box. I mean the whole set. So then it stays there for like a year or so. And then as time goes on, maybe it, it drifts. Ooh, nice to speak of that, dire flail. Uh, maybe it drifts lower as a new set comes out. goes back to 230, 220. But you want it to be stable. If you have a box falling apart and going down below 200s and 160, 150, 140, like we saw in the boom and bust of the post-COVID era, that's a sign of overprinting and people deleveraging and all of that. So obviously it's easy to say that when you've already seen what happened. Sun favored. Hey, I think there's one of these emblems that are pretty expensive. We're getting quite a bit of the Mythics. And look at that, a roaming throne, the most expensive rare in the flashiest version. So this is probably a $20, $30 rare. That's what I'm saying. To have regular collector boxes that aren't three, four, five hundred dollars, and to get multiple caverns at thirty-five bucks and have ten, twenty-dollar rares, that's that's pretty good, man. Like you know, no, it's not. Oh, I can just buy the box and flip it and make infinite money glitch. No, Timmy's, that's not the way it works. We're back to normal, and this is the way it's supposed to be. <laughs> I always love the color of an elephant. That makes me happy. Doctor Khan there, and a paleontologist, and I love the blue guy. Can't really see him in the hollow as much there, but. That's my opinion of Ixalan. Um, as of right now, I mean, I might get a patron message me asking to do another Ixalan box opening or something, but as of right now, this is it, folks. Um, I really wanted to see what some of these emblems that everybody keeps rambling about. They, I, they keep telling me it stands out very easily. You can't miss it, but I have not seen one yet. We're getting a bunch of just kind of random one $5 card range. Just We're not really hitting, I guess, box two. I guess we are holding true. Box two, no Cavern of Souls. I still thought Cavern of Souls was going to drop down to like 20 bucks, possibly even lower. Kind of like what happened to Liliana, but uh, apparently I was incorrect because Rude doesn't know how to play Magic. Um, apparently, uh, Cavern is... I'm, I'm incredibly surprised. Now, I, I gotta add something. I gotta add something. Um, I know we're getting later in the video now, but just be aware, everybody. Wizards, every once in a while, still uses the thing called... Hey, Al I always want to say Alcatraz on that mythic. Dino DNA! Apparently that's one of the cool cards that you can get with an emblem on it. I guess I guess it's like, I don't know, stamped on it or like a cold foil thing or something? I'm not really sure. Uh, anyways, there's a thing called allocation period. For those of you who haven't been around or listened to me ramble for many, many years, allocation period means, ooh, nice little uh, deepest sentinel, very nice. Um, God, least some of these epoch, these, uh, those mythics are wild looking, man, in confluence. So right in the box three, everybody. Allocation period means Wizards reserves the right to hold back product when a product is doing incredibly well and they don't want to crash it. Back in the day, seriously, pre-2020, allocation period was used on a very frequent basis. Okay, and what do we got here? We got Colossus, Colossus, eh, Colossus, eh, we're not the greatest. Back in the day... Allocation period happened almost every single Magic release due to demand and how successful Magic sets were. Um, allocation period was most prevalent in Dominaria, War of the Spark, Guilds of Ravnica, Ravnica Allegiance. These were all very, you know, successful times of Magic. And, oh, that's so cool looking. Look at that mine. Look at that thing. Dude, that is wild looking. Um, but nobody talks about it anymore. Once we shifted into this Chris Cox CEO era of just mass printing everything to the ground. I mean, Wizards has kind of gone away with any form of respect towards stores, WPN, tournaments, organized play. <laughs> Don't move. Um, a lot of this stuff has just kind of fallen apart in under his just raw money, money, money approach with Magic. And we've seen substantial damage to the brand and everything that's happened. Now, what's interesting is Ixalan draft and set boxes for the very first time since 2019 is the first standard magic set. Hey, Fanatic of Alcatraz, he is Savage Order, and the old Tide Bender, Neil Canard. <coughs> so Ixalan's the first set in a long time that it actually has an allocation period for the draft and set boxes. Meaning, I can't pick up the phone and say, Ah, Rudy, here's, here's a quarter million dollars. Uh, tell Wizards, send uh, five sealed palace to Florida. Like, oh, I didn't jewel. Like, they're not allowing that. Like, that's not a thing. Where they put this, I love the treasure maps. They put these allocation periods to kind of make sure the product stays stable. Okay, where they, they kind of reject 
sales in the short term and they only drip out so many cases and they do that for many months to make sure a product stays stable. So starving, an island, and corpses. Now, <clears throat> Ixalan was the very first time I've heard the word allocation period in four years. And I don't know if it's coincidental or just because we have our first, maybe it's because we have a standard set that's successful. I mean, I don't know about these land cycles. I hate the land cycles that come into play tapped, man. Like, make it come into play and take a life from me or take two life. I hate lands that come into play tapped. That's just my biggest pet peeve. Oh, oh, oh. All right, whoa. Okay, we got a, I thought we had a double cavern there for a second. I saw this and this. I was like, do we have a double cavern of souls? Amazing pack there, folks. We got a nice command tower in the middle. We got starving and command tower. So, I just wanted to lay that out there. That I don't know how I feel about them, I don't know, having a, an allocation period? Because I don't know if they're faking it. I don't know if they're really just desperate. I don't know how to take it right now. I'm not sure what it means. So, I'll probably do, ooh, ooh, Oki Kanoki Swamp, the deepest. This is another one of those real expensive $10, $20 mythics. Um, and they... <laughs> Weatherlight Duelist. Little uh, little history and lore there with the old Dr. M. Cool card. So, that's kind of my generic Ixalan approach of what's going on, everybody. I continue to be blown away by how stable, successful, and the demand of the game pieces from this product. Okay? It's been incredibly successful, and I don't know specifically what's causing that. I don't know if the success of Ixalan is because, simply put... Just like my own patrons who sent me messages after this. Like, Rudy, Ixalan looks good. And uh, I love you, bro. But I'm not buying this product because I just, I'm going to buy it after it collapses from Watsi on the secondary market or an Amazon dump. And, you know, so again, at release, I didn't even sell all my Ixalan. So out of like, let's say 3,000, I don't remember what the number Let's just say even 3,000 boxes. I remember I had like 600 boxes left. Didn't do, didn't do terrible. Oh, by the way, a braid. Anybody? Um, it didn't do terrible. But it was interesting to me that I wasn't even able to sell 3,000 boxes of a collector set, which I felt was very aggressively priced. So that was very interesting to me. Polyraptor, very nice. Um, that was interesting to me to see everyone's attitude. And then when the products came out and we haven't seen a collapse, the next thing that really blew my mind is how as of right now I'm selling like, I'd say probably six boxes of this a day. Even through the holidays and Christmas. I'm getting constant orders of patrons wanting to buy Ixalan. And I think that's... <laughs> pickaxe. Um, I, I think that's interesting because when I look at the records, these orders are coming from patrons who were a patron at release, but they didn't buy at release. They're, it's like they waited. It shows that... they're. How do I say this? It shows that people still like magic. I saw Jade Light. Um, and it also shows that people want the product. Deepest might love the artwork on that little Mayan calendar looking thing. And of course, the look at that, the souls of the lost. That's neat looking. It shows that people want the product. It shows that people don't think it's trash. But it also shows the complete lack of confidence and complete lack of any form of management with Hasbro Wizards of the Coast. It shows that people have absolutely zero confidence in this company not ruining everything. Like, that's all that's happening. Oh, man. Dude, look at those lightning grease. Fucking looks beautiful, dude. That That's kind of... That's my perspective right now. It shows how much... God, look at these packs. It shows... Ugh, how much people want to love the product. But are afraid to like anything with magic. It's, it's a straight-up just magic management consumer confidence situation. That's where... Oh! Oh, what is this? What the hell is this? Whoa, what is this? What is this? Dude, is that an emblem? That's got to be an emblem. Holy shit. That, oh, that's an emblem. Wow. Look at that. Holy smokes. Daniel, we got an emblem. I don't know if it's good. I don't know if this is a good or bad one. Holy. Okay, well, you guys weren't kidding. When you see an emblem, uh, you definitely know you have one. There's no way to pretend like you don't know if you have one. Wow. Holy crap. That's cool looking, man. Alright. Alright. That's pretty cool. That alright. Obviously, okay. That great time for me to mention, Daniel. Obviously, you get one card graded by uh, PCG for free. There's my demo card. Covered in dust as always when we wipe the dust off. And um, obviously we can get you something slabbed and engraved with the metal label and everything. And of course, remember, folks, 
uh, ignore all my dust and fingerprints. We'll get you, uh, and of course, if you have signed and weird stuff, we can still authenticate it. You don't get all the dust, though. That's my specialty, Rudy Dust. Unbelievable. I, I just, I'm blown away of what, wow, that emblem. So those emblems, those are what everyone's been talking, those things are like, dude, have you seen the prices of those emblems? Unbelievably expensive cards. I mean, like, I'm just like, holy, ooh, ooh, ancient one. That's a nice hit there. <laughs> ah, 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 access denied. Dude, those emblem cards are holding. I mean, the price point on those things is just unbelievable. So, okay, we got to talk about the emblem. So, a lot of people are asking, ooh, nice little jewel there. Why are the emblem cards holding such a high price? Ooh, deepest growth. And why are cards like the... Uh, Wildsville Drain, the en Enchanting Tales of Certain Confetti Cards, why are those holding, but, in other words, what determines the price point? Why is an emblem card so much more expensive than, like, a confetti card, if the rarity is supposed to be the same? Ooh, nice little eye there. Um, I still think neat cards like this are really underappreciated. I, I really do, I've always said that. So, and in my opinion, I don't, I think it's public perspective. I don't think there's much of a rarity difference between like a confetti foil and well actually no 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 hang on hang on hang on hang on I, i'm gonna backpedal here wait a minute no no i'm thinking about wait a second <laughs> when i was doing those wildsville drain box openings now that i think about it wait 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 no we always had between one and three confetti foils per case wait a second that's one to three per case i'm being told that these emblem cards ooh, michael uh, i'm being told the emblem cards only one per multiple cases so the rarity is substantially lower. That's cool looking. Look at that well. So actually, now that I think about it, okay, so, because everyone always asks me this, and I don't have an answer to it. How do you determine the value of a game piece? Game! How do you determine the value of, like, a confetti foil versus, you know, oh, first of the blessed, and, ooh, Sun's Avatar. Golly, some spicy stuff, and a, bl wow, really? That was a good pack. That was like a, holy smokes! That was like a triple $10, $15, that was like a $30 to $50 pack. Holy moly's. Anyways, um, okay, so where are we, box four? Yeah, this is box four. Holy cow, what a good box, everybody. But no, in my opinion, it, it's about the rarity. I truly think, ooh, that's neat looking, look at that sovereign. And life finds a way, that's so cool, bedrock tour. That, that's my attitude towards it. I think the value of these collectible chase cards are more about the actual rarity than the desirability. Because think about it. If one confetti foil was the same rarity as an emblem card, do you realize how expensive those confetti foils would be? Like, think about that. If these emblem Jurassic Park cards are one for every multiple cases, I mean, I mean cases of six, multiple cases, not like a master case of 24 collectors. But that's a big deal, man. Like, if there's only one in a master case of 24, you're getting, like, you know, serialized cards level. Like, you're talking some rare levels, man. Golly, I don't know the price of some of these. I know, like, these these Oki Finoki Swamps with the Deep Fountain. Like, these things are, like, 20 bucks. This is the full Monty version in foil. Those things are expensive, man. I think that's over a $20 card. So, box four has been absolutely insane. So, and remember, and I just, I don't, I gotta check after this video. I gotta check. I, if I have to guess, ooh, another Alcatraz. If I had to take a guess, uh, swooping something, uh, if, I, if I had to take a guess, like these emblems have to be like 100, 200. I know I've seen an emblem sell for four or 500. I don't know which one's the good one. I don't, I'm sure we don't have the best one, but I know those emblems have got to be between like one and $500 a card. Ooh, growing rice. Nice hit there. But that, that's my point, though. You don't, oh, and a roaming, <laughs> a growing rice and a roaming throne. Once again, Box four, congratulations, Daniel. Box four was an animal. Even if this is a crappy one at like 150 bucks or something, dude, plus the roaming thrones, oh my god. And then box one, you have the caverns, dude. That's what I'm saying. That's my point is when you have cards that people want and cards that are not just game pieces and actually have value and desirability, you know, the market will price them correctly. Sometimes the market misprices things for many, you know, long periods of time. Ah, uh, overflowing chalice. It's still a good uncommon, though. Just the chalice, though. Um, I like the fact that the... By the way, I need to stop for a second talking about the box toppers. We didn't mention that in this video. It's nice to see that we actually have box toppers that have different versions. Wasn't it like um, Midnight Hunt or Crimson 
Where like every box had the same piece of crap box topper. Wasn't that it? Come oh, another roaming throne coming in crazy right there. Like at least we have box toppers again that have multiple versions of box toppers. The point of a box topper is that you open it and then you're, there's decent box toppers, there's good box toppers, there's bad ones. And then you have some really rare like sought after, ooh that is cool, look at this guy. I don't remember seeing that piece of art, that's wild looking. And the, ooh, that reminds me of like 2D Nintendo art. Maybe that's why I like that so much. But that, that's my point, there's just, there's so many things that wizards could tweak on products to make them desirable. And I think they got a lot more right with this product, and that's why we're seeing a boo inner sun. That's why we're seeing constant stability with these products, you know? We're not seeing everything collapse and fall apart. Nice little poet there. And where we saw and I mean think about it. You know, it's almost like in 2021, 2022, Wizards got like super lazy or something, right? Because think about it. Look back at like the Midnight Hunt Crimson Val thing, right? Think about this. Anybody. Look back at this, okay? Look what happened, right? Look what they did. We had an era. Where, like, the box topper didn't even try. And then they made this double feature thing that had, like, ooh, ooh, look at that angel. And then they made the double feature product with, like, no effort at all. <laughs> like, just completely goofy. Completely goofy. And it's just, like, and it collapses, double feature. Nobody wants it. it was a, and that was a reward as a WPN exclusive store. Like, that's, those are the stores that you love the most, that really support Magic. And what does Wizards do in 2021, 2022? Off from Double Feature. The stores that you love the most, you give the worst pile of steaming, weak old tacos left in a hot car in Florida. Ooh, Admiral Brass. It's just, it's wild. Like, there are some things that Wizards does amazing. Like, look at this product! You can't, nobody can watch this video. Memes aside... Stepsisters and washing machines aside, nobody can tell me Ixalan is one of the worst sets ever. You can't, there's no way to say Ixalan is a bad product. I mean, the data, the success of this product in the dinosaurs, universes beyond, Jurassic Park, it actually matches the theme. It, you know, they have hidden emblem cards, which might as well be serialized cards, I guess. You've got box toppers with actually different versions, and some are actually really cool. Like, they did good stuff. In the market's rewarding a product that doesn't suck. Gee, what a flipping concept. If you make a good product, the market gets happy and everybody's excited about it. You know, but then they, it's like, it's like in that pandemic, man. Dude, I swear, everybody lost their mind. I think Rudy even lost his mind in the pandemic. So many things happened between 2020 and 2021. That 24-month block was just such a weird time, man. Yeah, we can all look back on things that we all did. And we, ooh, nice little primal hunger there. Nice. <laughs> blows my mind. <clears throat> I just gotta say, Rudy's gonna rant that this card is not like a $100 card. Like, old, old man Rudy, if this was 1995 and 4th edition or Ice Age came out, and we had a 12 drop, 12, 12 with Trample, and you can reduce the cost to cast it, <laughs> the total number of power of creatures you control. So if you're playing a green stompy Timmy deck, and you've got a couple elf, you know, elf dorks and land of war elves and maybe a force of nature. Well, not force of nature. Maybe some elves or maybe some animals out. Maybe a 1-1, one, one, a 2-2, two, two, a 3-3. Three, three. You can cast this thing for like 6 mana and get a 12-12 trample for like 6 mana with no drawback. Old man Rudy's brain is literally going inside of itself. That's kind of giggity. But anyway, you get the idea. Like, they just, cards like that... To reinforce how people today don't understand the power level and the insanity of Magic the Gathering. <laughs> it's completely nutsos, man. Ripples. Alright, nice little perfect hybrid dino at the top there and the old hammer skull. So I think I'm, I'm kind of, I'll slow down on my ranting everyone. Daniel, congratulations, man. What an awesome video today. Um, again, I guess if you're a patron, send me a private message if you're interested in doing a... Uh, um, an Ixalan box opening, because otherwise, uh, Tidebender. Ooh, nice little swarm. Um, otherwise, this is it, folks. Um, <coughs> the Ixalan set will be retiring early on this channel because, um, uh, well, I've only got a couple hundred boxes left, so it's going to be pulled down soon from the patrons. And, um, yeah, I'm going to keep the last couple hundred for, for old Rudy's creepy, greedy self. Very last box of the video, and, um, we're going to see what happens. I, I've been telling you all for a while. And I've been telling you all and saying it, we are not going to see Amazon dumps 
on new product anymore. And I keep saying that, and everybody keeps laughing at me. Oh, look at Rudy trying to shill and save Hasbro. And ooh, Thought Vessel. Very, I love the artwork. So we did not hit any crazy box toppers up here. But what I did know, what was interesting is, look at this, look at this. We did six collector boxes. All six boxes have a different box topper. That's what I'm talking about. Are all of them uncommons, or do we actually get a rare? No, 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 wait, wait, wait. Two rares and four uncommons. Like, that is the proper distribution. That's what a box topper should be. And then maybe every one, every page or so, you get a mythic one or something. But that's what a correct box topper should be, everybody. <clears throat> I'm losing my voice. I'm getting too wound up. Shade light. Like, it's it's not a crazy concept, man. Ooh, another hammer school. It's just, you know, put some effort into it. And Wizard's stupid Dr. Cox and his cocktail party Cynthia bullshit... I mean, put some effort into the products and slow down. It may, ooh, 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 ooh. Oh, I thought we had a Catherine back there. And, you know, the market will... Ooh, ooh, Skull Spore Nexus. That's our first appearance of the day there. That was, what was a $5, 10 Mythic. I don't know if it still is, though. Like, people want to love magic. They want to be excited about a product. They want unique, rare cards. They don't want game pieces. <laughs> they want cool things. They want cards to be chased after and have desire and make it exciting. Why do you think, you know, like if you think about it, look at Lord of the Rings, the special box open we've been doing on the channel now. We've been having a blast. I've been loving it. The patrons just keep begging for more. Everybody keeps emailing me to do more and sign up. It's just been, I mean, we get those serialized cards, the posters. I mean, it's just been so much, ooh, tyrant. It's been a ton of fun to do. And I get it, that's why. Because they're not $500 a box. Like Commander Master set was supposed to be, or like original Lord of the Rings was. You get tons of surge foils. Nice little angel there. We got the old uh, favored paleontologist again. Sentinel, the nameless city. Like, you know, take take a moment here. This is probably a crappy card, bulk rare, maybe a game piece worth seventeen cents. Take a moment. Three drop, three four vigilance. No tapping when attacked. Whenever this card enters the battlefield, attacks. You get to create map tokens. So no drawback. It's already a 3 for 3-4. Three, you don't have to tap it, so you can use it for attack and defense if you want to. And it pumps out tokens. And there's no drawback. Like, Old Man Rudy, it's just, that's why I, it blows my mind. The game pieces in 2023-2024. And it just shows how deluded and how confused and, and how just distorted magic cards and pricing and things are. It's just a really bizarre thing and it just shows what's happened to the market and the secondary situation of these game pieces Ooh, get lost very nice card again two drop instant speed two drop boom anytime two drop instant opponent's turn when you're in the bathroom anytime speed destroys a creature an enchantment or a, and a planeswalker of course it's controller can create map tokens so again but still give them the fucking map tokens it can pop out a creature an enchantment, or a planeswalker for two drop with instant speed. Like, ooh, ooh, nice little uh, dragon. Again, these cards, like, it's incredible, the power level of these cards. Which, again, I'll, I'll say it again, this is why a lot of older people, and old farts, and the old guard like me, complain that new magic doesn't feel like vintage magic, or alpha 40, or vintage, or, you know, old school magic, dino DNA. You know, it doesn't feel the same. Because when you play old magic... Um, it's a whole different, it's a very, very skill-based, very, very different thing, depending on what format and what you're doing, Deepest Growth. Because if, like, I'm personally not a huge fan of, like, 93, 94 competitive magic, old school, because it's so competitive, and the power level is so insane with some of these combos and different decks and things. It's not my favorite, and that's okay, but other people love it. They're obsessed with coming up with new things. It's a wild thing. Oh, God, it looks so cool. Look at that wall of the Forgotten. Personally, I know you guys can make fun of me all you want, but it's the end of the video. No one's even watching anyways. My favorite stuff to do, if you, and you, ha if you haven't done this, you haven't lived. It's like the first time you got to play and you got to try... I'm not going to say that. The first time you got to eat tacos or, or like waffle fries. By the way, Roaming Throne again. An incredible card. And again, like, can we take a minute? Here, hold on. I don't take a minute. I just want, we're going we're gonna to complain. Look at this thing. Look at this card. It's a four drop. Colorless. Any deck. Four, four. Has ward. Okay. And you choose creature type. 
And then all the chosen creature types get addition to its other types, so it can kind of, you know, that little kind of, uh, what's it called, channeling? Or um, whatever, you get the idea. Triggered abilities of other creature types you control, it triggers an additional time. Holy potatoes. Anything that can multiply or increase triggers is a really big deal. That I just want to lay that out there. And by the way, here we go. Look at this. Look at this weatherlight duel. Three drop. Three, two, first strike. Attacks. Each opponent can't block with more than one creature. And as long as this thing is tapped, no more than one creature can attack you. Like, the mechanics of these cards. And there are already vanilla cards of three mana for a three, two, first strike already isn't a terrible card. Like, it's amazing. And there's no drawbacks, of course. It's amazing the power and the mechanics that these cards have with no drawbacks. Anyways. Daniel, thanks for being a very kind patron. Congratulations. I think it was a great video. I think this alone. And again, even if this is the crappiest $100 one, dude, what an awesome thing. We were able to get one. Uh, obviously, Daniel, send me a private message if you want that slab by PCG or if you want me to just send everything out. If you want that graded and something else, if you want extra ones graded, I'll get you a discount. Like, if you want 10 cards graded, I'll get you a couple of them for free instead of just this one. Um, I think I'll just cut off there. I've been rambling in so long. It's a long video. Oh, let me, let, me, let me say that one thing. I won't make a video on it. <clears throat> well, I was talking about the Alpha 40, old school magic. and My favorite type of playing magic is actually getting a group of friends together. Having a great afternoon or evening. Have some good food, bunch of tacos or waffle fries or something, okay? Seriously. Take a box of Fallen Empires or a box of Homelands or a box of Ice Age and draft the box... Or, and then after you draft it, if you want to play again, play against your friends of an only set format. Okay? In other words, take Ice Age and, may, and have a Friday night with your friends where you all make decks and you play against each other. Okay? And the only cards you can use are cards from Ice Age. I'm serious. You will have more fun. It will blow your mind. It, it's hilarious to see what people come up with. The games don't end in two turns. It, <laughs> it has this vibe of old-fashioned magic that you don't get with today's overpowered, insane cards of tier one super mega net deck meta. This You haven't lit. It's same thing. Homelands, Fallen Empires do the same thing. Okay? Same thing. Put some basic lands because obviously Homelands and Fallen Empires, you don't really have a lot of... You'll, have, you'll need some basic land for those. But make a tournament and play decks with only Fallen Empire cards. Only Homeland cards. Dude, I, last time I did that years ago, I cracked a box of Homelands with a couple people. And we did a Homelands draft. Okay? And then after, which was okay. It was just silly. And then after that, we played a couple more rounds for that evening. And everybody can only build decks using basic lands. And then, of course, only cards from the Homelands expansion. And it was the most fun I think I've had playing Magic since I was like a teenager. Like, I get the power level, the old school, the using power nine. It's fun and all, don't get me wrong. But there's something special about making... <clears throat> I'm losing my voice. There's something special about playing magic with only cards from one particular set. Kind of a certain era. But without the extreme power that everybody knows is the best. Oh, everybody knows the power nine. Everybody knows time volts and stasis and all these icy manipulators and berserks. and No, no, no. Do it with the obscure set. It's so, I can't emphasize enough, if you want to have a nostalgic bonding experience with friends in a fun experience, I'm telling you all, get a box of fucking Mirage, okay? Or like a starter brick of Mirage, and everybody just make some deck, draft it first, and then just play for the rest of the night only decks in a tournament with friends, and bet some money with your friends, and or play strip magic with your friends. It's hilarious, okay? And just play with cards. From a certain era. It's legendary, man. Same thing with the 2000s magic. The Legions. Nemesis. Onslaught. You know, Scourge. Like, Scourge and Legions and Nemesis. These goofy, weak, goofy-powered sets. That have terrible power levels. No demand in modern magic. But if you play just with those sets. with ba Throw some basic land in. And literally draft those sets. Or just make decks. Have to take a bunch of... Get, get a bunch of cheap bulk from that era. And play magic with only those sets. It is one of the most surreal experiences. It, it, it's, it doesn't even feel like you're doing the same thing. Alright, anyways, I'm done. Thanks for being a very kind patron, Daniel. Everybody have a beautiful day out there.